I'm about two months away from completing the postgraduate program in artificial intelligence and machine learning from the University of Texas at Austin. It's a seven month program designed to build concrete skills in AI and ML and you get a professional certificate upon completion. This is the fifth video of a multi-part series where I'm reviewing this program in real time as I'm going through it. And in this video, I'm going to review the fourth module in neural networks. I'll talk through what I learned, the project, time commitment, and difficulty. And of course, I'll cover other modules in other videos, so make sure to subscribe, follow and make sure to check out all that content as well. And feel free to check out the link down below for more information about the program itself. With that said, let's get to it. So this has probably been one of the most challenging modules so far. And I'd be lying if I said some of this content wasn't going over my head a little bit, but I understood the general concept, the idea, and very important for the project, I understood the coding, but the basic idea here with neural networks is to build an algorithm that mimics to some degree how the human brain learns. So in the human brain, you've got about 86 billion neurons and each one of those neurons is sending and receiving signals to and from other neurons at all times. And this is done through a synapse, kind of like an electrical cable. And the way the brain learns is through experiences whereby connections between those neurons are made stronger or weaker. For example, if you're learning to play the piano, the more you learn to read music, the more you'll be able to translate that to specific finger movements and patterns that strike the right keys at the right time. And if you practice consistently and over time, you'll build stronger neural connections to where you can basically play the piano on autopilot without doing a lot of thinking. And that's more or less what's happening when you're building these neural networks. You're building an algorithm that takes in a bunch of data. You pass the data through a few layers of neurons where a bunch of different calculations are happening. And the connections between those neurons are constantly being adjusted based on the learning process. And ultimately the algorithm puts out a prediction. Neural networks are used in a lot of real world applications applications like image and speech recognition, natural language processing, as well as recommendation systems like what Netflix uses to recommend to viewers something that they may like to watch based on their history and based on what other people like them have also watched. Now the project that I did in this module had to do with customer churn at a bank. And that's really just understanding which customers are likely to leave the bank entirely. Now this prompt was actually very similar to the previous module on advanced machine learning, but I'm guessing really the point here is to take that same or similar problem and run that through the motion of a neural network to see whether over time it can learn and make better predictions. So in this project, I pulled in all the libraries that I've been pulling in other modules, but now also incorporating TensorFlow for the first time. And this is a library that includes includes a lot of different layers, regularizers, optimizers, all designed for neural networks. As with all the projects so far, I go through the typical motions of pulling the data, understanding the shape of the data set, the types of data, see what I need to clean up, if there are any duplicate or missing values. In this case, there wasn't really a whole lot to clean up, which is great, it saves me a lot of time and I can focus on the new content. But then analyze the data a little bit and start asking myself, okay, well, between all these variables that exist, where do I see patterns? Which one of these variables might be an explanation or at least part of an explanation as to the risk of a customer churning. I also look to see if there are any kind of imbalances in the data. For example, if my data set is just customers that are over the age of 50 and very few in other age categories, my model might only learn about that. And if I were to apply that model to different age profiles, it might not do as well making predictions. But luckily the data is relatively balanced. I do a little bit of data pre-processing. I drop some variables that have very little or zero to do with customer churn. And this helps reduce the noise that could maybe make the model perform worse. Once all that happens, I generate a very basic 
neural network to have as a baseline. I just need to specify a few attributes, like what metric I want to optimize for, how many iterations I want to take this model through to learn. But then I run the model to check and see how well it's learning and if it's improving in its prediction accuracy. After that happens, I then generate a new model with some additional changes like adding more layers, using different optimizers, and also using other techniques that may improve model performance. None of which I'll really get into in this video as that would then make this much more technical than I want it to be. But at the end of it, I've got about five different neural network models, all of which I test and then ultimately I pick the one that has the best score and that seems to have the best learning curve. Now this model was the most time consuming actually, not because the content was really that lengthy, but because of the project. Up until this point when creating any kind of algorithm for the projects, I would basically achieve very high levels of accuracy with all these models, something usually north of 90%. And in this one, the accuracy was way lower, around the low 70s. And no matter what I tried, granted, I'm not an expert, I couldn't seem to get the models to perform better. So I spent a ton of time trying to eke out slightly better and better results and ultimately I wasn't getting very far, I wasn't seeing a lot of dramatic improvements, it kind of plateaued. And I was thinking I must be doing something wrong to be achieving the results that I'm getting. However, after consulting with some of my peers about the general performance of our models, I came to the conclusion that my results were actually very typical. In fact, it's probably a fairly accurate representation of the real world where maybe the data you're getting in is not good quality data, or just the fact that some events are very difficult to predict with a high level of accuracy. So then I became more or less satisfied with my mid 70s accuracy. But once I got over that, I was able to submit and then I was good. So averaged out between all the content, the live sessions and the project, I spent maybe about 12 hours a week where a lot of the time was over indexed on the project. Now, as far as difficulty, this was definitely a bigger learning curve than all the previous modules. And like I mentioned, some of the content didn't really sink in all that well. And given the struggle that I had building and testing a model and trying to optimize it in the project, it all certainly felt pretty challenging. So I'd give the difficulty a four out of five. That said, the program is still going pretty well overall. I'm learning a ton and continuing to build upon a lot of the concepts that get covered in the previous modules. So at this point, everything is looking pretty good. Next module will be on computer vision, which I wasn't too excited about, but I actually have started some of that content and it's way more interesting than I would have imagined. So make sure to check out that video when it comes out. And if you want to learn about my experience through the rest of the program with the rest of the modules, make sure to subscribe and follow and check out my content where I go through my entire experience in this program. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around.